In this video, I will tell you why you should upgrade your 3D printer to a Marlin firmware 2.0 and why maybe not. And we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So you're thinking about whether to upgrade to Marlin 2.0 or not. This video will give you a lot of pros and cons and make your decision a bit easier. The last video I made about upgrading the Ender 3 to Marlin 2.0 raised a lot of questions around problems with the upload process, general issues with Marlin builds, and also issues where people ask me why enabling multiple features like auto bed leveling, SD card support, and linear advance at the same time causes out of memory issues when trying to compile Marlin firmware. And we want to shed a little bit more light on this whole complex. But before I go into the details, I have one question to you. Why do you want to upgrade to Marlin 2.0 and not stay with the previous release 119? Please put your reason in the comments section. So for all of you who are new in this topic, I have made a list of things that are reasons why you should upgrade from your stock firmware that the printer manufacturer has flashed on your printer to Marlin firmware. And I don't mean specifically 2.0, but generally Marlin firmware. So there is a few really good reasons why you want to do this. First, there is terminal runaway protection and I say this in all of my videos about firmware. This is one of the safety features printer manufacturers for some reasons don't enable or don't properly test with their printer releases. So this is a must have feature. Second might be mesh bed leveling. If your printer doesn't have a bed leveling probe, this is a very good alternative that helps you to get the first layer right without any hardware modifications. I really like that feature a lot. Number three, for the ones of you who either already have a bed leveling probe or who want to install one, there is auto bed leveling, which is supported in Marlin 119 and 2.0. However, if you want to use the latest Beel Touch version 3, it's only supported in Marlin 2.0. Number four, power loss recovery might be something that you want if you think that either you might have a power loss during long prints or someone will accidentally turn off your printer during printing. As number five, we have linear advance, which will help you get better print results with sharp corners. So these corners will not have any distortions from over extrusion anymore if you calibrate this precisely. And overall, I would say Marlin firmware will give you more stability and the latest features for free. Remember, printer manufacturers of cheap printers mostly treat their products like fire and forget. Once they are produced, they will mostly never see a firmware upgrade. So you have to take care of yourself if you want things to be fixed. Now let's come to the different versions of Marlin firmware and what makes each version special and probably better for you. So let's say you have already a printer running Marlin 119, the latest version before 2.0. What would be good reasons to upgrade? First, there is 32-bit support, which is the most important change that was introduced with this new version. If you intend to upgrade your mainboard and switch it out with a 32-bit mainboard, you will also have to upgrade to Marlin 2.0. Then there is support for new touchscreens like the TFT35 for the Ender 3, which is only present in Marlin 2.0. And I'm gonna test this on the Ender 3 very soon. Also, if you like to install a Beel Touch version 3, it's only supported in Marlin 2.0. In general, you have to know that any new feature or hardware support will only be added to Marlin 2.0. Marlin 119 is end of life. It will not get any new features and probably barely any bug fixes. So the whole community of developers and supporters is heading for Marlin 2.0. This might be in the long term a reason for you to also make the shift. Probably using new hardware like a RAM board, which has more memory available or going right for a 32-bit board, which has even more power and some of those support Wi-Fi and more cool features, which are really tempting. But what are the reasons that will keep you from upgrading to Marlin 2.0? First, there is the fact that most of the features that existed already in Marlin 119 will take up more of the available program memory in the 2.0 version. I can only imagine that this is the case because there has been a lot of changes and improvements in these existing features that cause the overall memory consumption to grow. 
For example, in Marlin 119, you can have SD card support together with auto bed leveling and BL touch support, and this would still fit on the 8 bit board with only 128 kilobyte of program memory, just barely with 1% memory left, but it will fit. And this combination will make you disable SD card support in Marlin 2.0 to be able to fit auto bed leveling and BL touch support to the old 8 bit mainboards. I definitely can say that a lot of you will have to disable SD card support if you want to use Marlin 2.0 and find another way how to control your printer, be it either directly from your computer using Cura, Prontoface, or using your Raspberry Pi with Octoprint or another solution. I've also done some more research on the topic of memory consumption in Marlin 2.0 on 8-bit boards and wrote a blog post with more details and a list of features and their memory consumption. You can look it up in the description of this video to learn more and how to mitigate. And there is also power loss recovery specifically which needs the SD card support. So you cannot enable it and auto bed leveling, BL touch and more features. So you see where this is going. To be honest, today, and this might of course change the longer this video exists, there is not so many things that are better in Marlin 2.0 compared to 119. For somebody who has an 8-bit board like in the Anit A8 or Ender 3 or basically almost any cheap printer released in the last years. However, there is some exceptions in the 8-bit world that might not run into these kind of memory problems, naming the RAM sports with the Arduino Mega 2560 processor that has 256 kilobytes of memory, which is twice the amount of memory the usual 8-bit boards have. Another board that comes to my mind is the Tri-Gorilla, which also has the same processor. So these might be safe to use with Marlin 2.0 and all the features because they have more memory. But honestly, if you would have to buy a new mainboard today, just go for 32-bit for sure. These boards are at least the same price of a RAMS board, if not sometimes even cheaper. Anyways, the most expensive thing with a new board will probably be the stepper drivers, not the board itself. If you like the latest and greatest silent drivers from TMC, for example. I also have a few words to say about Marlin 2.0 in general. I've seen a lot of changes to Marlin 2.0 just in the last two weeks. For example, when I released the Ender 3 upgrade to Marlin 2.0 video, Marlin 2.0.1 was the latest version. And now, two weeks later, we are at 2.0.3 and one major change happened already. The default configuration files for all the different printer models have been moved out of the Marlin repository in GitHub to another repository and people already start complaining that they can't find the config files anymore. I can just very much relate to anyone who is not used to be a programmer and using GitHub and just because files have disappeared from a directory that the next obvious thing to do is to read the readme file in that directory to find out where the files have gone. And in general I want to say Marlin is developed by people like you and me. It's people who are doing this on the side. There is rarely a few people, very very tiny amount of people who are doing this full time and they are struggling to get paid for it. It's really something that's given to you for free and this is how it is. So in general you see there's pros and cons and quite some things to consider but in general Marlin 2.0 is where the community is heading. So we should all be aware of the implications be it we will have to upgrade our mainboards at some point in the future or we will have to stay with what we have. But that can also be totally fine. If you have a printer that is working fine and is producing great results, probably better don't change that. So I hope you're getting some value out of this video. If so, like it, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.